Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here for the opening round of the 2023 Huck Central benefiting the Mary Sunshine House. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, joined alongside Joey Anderson. How are we doing today? I'm doing great. Heck yeah. We're through the front nine. You're five under, which feels like that's right about on pace with where you should be or no? Yeah, definitely. Um, not disappointed with a five under through the front nine. Um, I think the back nine is a little bit more scoring opportunity. So if you can get a few under on the front, going to the back, feeling good. All right. We head into hole number 10. A little shorty, 185. Yeah, 185, little gap up the hill to the right. Um, forehand plays good here. Backhand Anheuser also plays. Um, the only danger on this hole is really left. If you go left, there's a creek OB. And even if you don't reach the OB, the, uh, the, the rough is pretty bad. Something tells me you might know something about the rough now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kicks left uh, over there. Not OB, but in the rough. And right there, MJ's he's going to be okay for a par. Um, but I, I don't think that's a birdie opportunity. Yeah, and I have to say, is this beautiful shot coming in? It just needs to sit down. It's a little bit of roll. That's the same zone that he aced with back on hole number one. But what I have to say is for as many trees there is on this course, through the front nine, I feel like the kicks have been somewhat manageable. Clearly that means you guys have been mostly in the fairways, but we haven't seen anything crazy for kicks. I mean, there could be a lot of pinball action out here. Yeah, there's a lot of small trees, um, but no nothing terrible here. MJ with the jump putt layup. I actually had a pretty good gap here, but there was just one little branch in my way, which I hit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's got to be frustrating, 185 feet uphill, and yeah. here you are with a putt from this distance. Nice putt. Yeah. <laughs> that was longer than your approach shot. Yeah, now that I think about it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when I hit that limb, it just kind of <laughs> killed it. I probably threw that, that forehand 50 feet in the putt. Similar. <laughs> well, beautiful save, even though you had to work hard for it. Let's see if Grady can get the putter going. It's been a little off today. And that one's on. That's a great putt there from Grady. Especially after the front nine, he's had some putting struggles. Yeah, just hasn't taken advantage of a few times he put himself in position. He started out with the ace back on one, and uh, since then hasn't really done much. Good birdie there by Evan. That's going to bring him to four under. MJ taps in, and we move on to hole 11. So hole 11 is very very downhill and a lot of trees pretty tight tunnel um, it kind of gets flat near the basket thankfully so you don't really have to worry about going too far past i feel like it's the angle feels a little weird of course it's a downhill shot but then i was surprised to see brady release this one so straight so flat Rather than throwing it down the hill, it kind of felt like he threw it straight out. Yeah, I think he threw a berg there. He was kind of throwing that a little bit around on the front nine, too. So Evan oh. almost acing it and sits pretty close, too. Yeah, I love that angle in which it looked like he was you know, just trying to match the slope of the ground. You're opting for a little standstill forehand. Yeah, I'm going with the Berg as well and got a pretty fortunate little kiss there at the end. Did you put a little too much on it? Of course, you got the kiss, but did, did you juice it too much or was that the the speed you needed? It it didn't feel like I juiced it too hard. If if it didn't hit anything, I'm still have a look. But, I mean, it's a tough speed control kind of shot. 
Yeah, throwing it downhill and then getting it to check up right at the base of the hill. Yeah, you almost want to just barely crest the hill. Which is really tough to do. So though, though Grady's, you know, circles edger, so he really actually contemplated for quite some time going back and forth with his best stance. And he knew out of his hand just wasn't enough. It's a little too much obstruction for him to deal with. Yeah, MJ with a little comeback here for par, and he leaves it short out of his hand. He knew it. Evan from a similar distance, probably 20 to 25 feet. And that's just barely high. Catches a, a solid amount of chains, to be fair. I'm also at a similar distance. And I left mine high as well. Hmm. This uh, basket not doing anybody any favors. It <laughs> doesn't feel like it should be a problem either. No, I don't I don't really know what the issue there was. <laughs> I think that was more of a player issue than a basket issue. Yeah, all of you guys with, with looks and nobody able to convert, including the bogey there by MJ. Not exactly what you'd expect on a downhill 200-footer. As we head over to hole number 12. Another short one. Another short one. Um, straight uphill, just like hole 10. It's very similar to hole 10. Um, forehand plays good. Backhand Anheuser also plays good. This one's kind of perched on a rock, though. And if you kind of get under that rock, you, you put yourself in a in a really weird position to kind of maybe turbo put it or something weird. But the play is to kind of play it to the right up in the flat, and Grady does that very nicely. It gets it to sit down right away as well. And I like how Evan almost even set himself up on the left side of that tee pad, almost as if he was really trying to position himself so that he made sure to push it over to the right. And you're going to go with the backhand. Yeah. Why backhand as opposed to the forehand? I really just feel more confident in it. I don't, I don't really know why, because I did go forehand on 10, but that one I feel like you really need to get right here. I guess the course designer got me. <laughs> by putting the basket dead straight. <laughs> but I still have this look here from 15, 20 feet uphill. And what a unique green and a yeah. terrible roll away. Terrible you, and fortunate. Yeah. Was gonna, <laughs> what are you thinking, though, as as it falls off the platform and slides down, though? Um, I'm thinking I have to putt again. <laughs> I'm out. You're still out. Three worst yeah. words in disc golf, right? Yeah. Oh, that's a good putt. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't even see the cage there. The rock was in the way. I was like, I hope I don't hit this rock and look stupid. That is that's definitely a, a farther putt than what your previous one was. Yes, it was, <laughs> it was farther. Okay. So crisis averted. That's two or three big par saves now that we've seen that you've had. Do those stress you out? A little bit, but then I'm just like, you know, Next shot, next putt, one shot at a time. But um, great birdies for the rest of the card. Yeah, you'll lose a stroke to the card. And it is a beautiful green, though. I love what they're doing out here using all the uh, natural terrain as we head over to hole number 13. Hole 13, one of the harder holes, if I had to guess. 390 feet, probably plays 330. Um, downhill, needs to have a late finish to the left. There's a creek OB long, but it doesn't really come into play, I feel like. Grady leaves this one a little inside, but it kind of doesn't hit much. Catches a late tree. Yeah, 
in terms of just overall f shaping of fairways through the first 13 holes, this is my favorite shape. I just, there's something with that, you know, kind of gentle bend downhill. You have to hit the line, or as MJ says, he just is going to throw it in a general direction. <laughs> and uh, he says, Heiser in and cross your fingers, but the overall shape of this this fairway just i really like it yeah it's that it's a great hole this is one of the better holes on the property so far yeah so mine, many yeah mine kind of kicks there i pulled it right but it kicks and kind of kept going down there mm. evan catches a tree leaves himself probably a little outside circle yeah, and I was shocked to see how far down yours actually carried. I, it looked like it just kicked hard right, and you were going to be quite a ways away. But you carried a considerable distance and a great forehand there by Grady to the point where you're you're all the way down in the flat spot with a long look for a birdie. Yeah, it got a little, like, Annie kick, and then I kept watching it. It just kept going. Oh, yeah, I tried, I tried to give that one a good run a little bit right. Yeah, this is in somewhere in circle two here for Evan. And pulling an MJ, I feel like. He knew that one was in. Yeah. Yeah, I was low right, though, so. I mean. I don't oh, know he would have looked stupid, there. huh? I don't know, I don't yeah. Know what to think there. <laughs> but nonetheless, great putt, great par save. I feel like that's a page out of your playbook, uh, a couple of the par saves that you've had to have out here. MJ with the lone birdie. Yeah, good bounce back. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. Here we are for hole 14. Hole 14. This one, you just kind of toss a forehand up with almost any disc, really. Um, a lot of bushy trees. You just want to get over and get right and give yourself a look. Not much danger here other than keeping the forehand too straight. And off the tee, this kind of gives me, and I'm not just trying to find other courses to compare to, but this gives me like whole five Maple Hill vibes where you're, you've got this framed up tee shot and you're throwing a forehand. Now, you don't have to throw this one as hard as what you do at Maple Hill because that's, uh, I want to say, 285. But so it's definitely more of a pull to get there. But it kind of has a similar shape to it or at least feel off the tee. Yeah, it's almost like you have to kind of like move to the right to see the basket. You're just kind of like tossing it up in the sky and just hoping it gets there. Going with a berg here, and I kind of left it straight. Yeah, it kind of looked like the, the air just dropped out from under it. Now, I know that's not exactly a floaty disc by any means, but it looked like it just almost as if the wind pushed it down. Yeah. It definitely did drop, but it dropped more than I thought it would, even being a berg. But I was happy to see that I was out of that. Yeah, you're at least on the edge here. You have a look here for birdie. Evan doesn't convert, but of course you do. Yeah, I was happy with that one, especially after all of the pars that I've been getting. I was like, I need this. And if you think about it, this is arguably the most open green that you guys have seen up into this point. I was thinking about, you know, the the tee shot here is a little bit congested, but otherwise this almost has to feel a little foreign when you guys get to this green. It's it's like no other green you've seen. Yeah, maybe that plays into Evan's miss there because some, sometimes it's easier to putt with trees around you because you kind of feel like you're in a room or... You just have something that has to frame you up. 
and there you're just wide open as we head over to hole 15 just 250 feet yep 250 uphill you kind of want to throw something over stable that glides to the left instead of dumping to the left because it's so uphill you need to get left you just kind of throw it flat and high like MJ does here and even there he kind of just barely creeped over but that's a great shot Grady pulled that one and hits the hillside and, and it kind of slides back down on him. Just yeah. really a foot from being in the perfect spot. That It lands a, a foot to the left, and he's right there on the dance floor. Now he's going to be putting uphill. Yeah, mine was a little inside there. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Yeah, Catches you and Grady split the difference between the two of you, and it would be perfect. Evans looks pretty good as well, but this is what you see on this hole. You don't give it enough height, and it just catches the rock and rolls straight down. Leaves you a tough uphill putt. You have to be thinking about the drop-off directly behind this basket, or to the right of it maybe, or not so much? I, I wasn't really thinking about it. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Nice. Yeah, I was happy with that one. I remember this... Um, this green being flat up to the left and behind it. And I was like, Heiser putt, it's going to the left. No problem. And, I, you know, I've now covered Evan a handful of times on my channel, and I feel like today has maybe just not been his day. He feels just a bit off. Yeah, just a little bit off. Sometimes it's better to be a lot off than a little bit off. In the woods. And Grady makes a great uphill putt. <laughs> MJ up here on the green. Makes good. And although these holes have been shorter, you know, they're certainly not just absolute gimmies. We see all the challenges that are in front of you, you know, with the rollaways, the trees, the rocks. Um, but if, if you're on, I could see how somebody could be shredding out here as we head over to 16. Yeah, another short hole. This hole plays really good for the forehand, um, especially on the hillside. It's There's kind of like this little plateau where the basket is. Um, it's only 250, so... Whatever, whatever you got forehand. MJ early release, but he gets through. Yeah, it still gets it pin high. So he'll have a downhill look at it. It'll have a little bit of obstruction, but for cutting it off early, he's still going to have a look. Yeah, we were talking about how we don't see him throw forehands off the <laughs> tee. No, it's... It's pretty rare. I mean, any forehand is is relatively rare. A forehand off the tee, I feel like, is even more rare. So, well, MJ special here today. Yeah, great shot there from Grady. Mine kind of pushed a little straight here, but I didn't hate it until that happened. And now you couldn't even necessarily see that from the tee, could you? I could not. So I was like, oh, you know, I got some kind of a look. Yeah, you're thinking you're going to be inside the circle 20, 25 feet. A little bit of astonishment when you showed up and found yourself all the way down the hill. And a near perfect shot there by Evan. Uh, Evan is how old? I believe he's 20 or 21 if I had to, if I had to guess. Okay, and you're? I'm 19. You're 19, okay. Yeah, and that's a good bid, but it's still frustrated that you weren't parked. <laughs> yeah, MJ leaves it short. Not catching any metal, but sits close. Yeah, I think he was, you know, maybe a little concerned about catching one of those field goal poles or trees there that would have, you know, stopped him. Yep, yeah, got a bunch of tap ins here.
Well, 17, just two left to go. This was uh, straight ahead, right? I mean, is this the straightest shot you've had to throw all day? I mean, it has to be. Maybe hole 11, the downhill one. Sure. But that's downhill. This doesn't have much variable as far as elevation goes. It's, it's right in front of you, 220. Well, the hardest part about getting two aces in one round is getting the first one. So all I'm thinking here for Grady is let's see you do it again. And he disappointed me. Yeah. Yeah, he pulled it a little bit right and gets a, kind of a nasty kick. I mean, that could have could have been more friendly. And in terms of just overall, like, straightforwardness, I mean that literally and figuratively, like, this is, I feel like, the most straightforward hole probably on the whole course. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, the gap is fairly big. It's really fair really big though i mean they have those t that tree that's kind of guarding the basket but that's comes into play when putting more so i would say but we kind of made this whole look hard <laughs> you sure did and i wasn't trying to set that up to poke fun at you guys but yeah you shouldn't have a 60 footer <laughs> <laughs> all right all right yeah i didn't like that one out of my hand they've all been kind of a little right on those those long jumpers and you can hear me i was like oh no and then it kind of started to swing and i said maybe and then it goes in man yeah evan's just been a little off all around just a little bit here and there oh what a great putt see plenty of obstruction but still cashes it in so that's the score you should be getting on this hole. Although all three of you that now birdied it had to do some work for it, but at least you'll you'll pick up the birdies that uh, you should have. We'll take a quick jerky break by our friends over at Double G Jerky. My name is Garrett Gerthy, and I'm the founder of Double G Craft Jerky. I love the fact that it's resealable. I can just get a little bit, keep my energy levels up, but not eat like a half of a meal in the middle of my round. My favorite bag is the smash cracked pepper. That's my perfect salty snack. This is my go-to, the Saxon sweet and spicy. If this bag gets open, there's no need for the seal because I'm gonna eat it all. I couldn't agree with you more there, uh, David. Wiggins, of course, I'm going with the hot boom sauce. And uh, speaking of which, this is no treat. Hole number 18 to close out? Yeah, this is a really tough hole. Um, par four, tight, low ceiling tunnel. Some players I heard talking about going over to make the birdie easier, maybe. We were talking about it a little bit. There was a backup, but just keep it down the middle for the first shot and then throw a forehand second shot. All right, some obstruction on that left side. You really needed to turn and keep turning if you're going to push all the way through that gap. Yeah, he's a little left side. I would say the left side is a little better than the right side because okay. it gives you an angle, and the gaps are also a little bit bigger. You can hear MJ talk about it there. And throughout the round, are you checking the scores? I mean, you're currently sitting at eight under with one to go are you checking scores and seeing what else is kind of happening out there kind of a little bit it depends on the day um this round one i was looking at scores kind of on the front nine like after the front nine i was like okay you know what are people shooting and then i realized after all those pars i was like i got i gotta get going a little <laughs> bit here and so Evan was really just trying to set himself up with a layup off the tee and then took himself out of position on the second shot. MJ has a pretty decent gap here and gets a nice skip. He says he'll take it. And yet another forehand out of MJ. Yeah, you can see how these gaps are kind of 
friendly. Yeah, quite sporadic. And if you can punch it like that, what a shot. What a skip, too. That was a big, high flare skip. But he'll have a look. Yeah, that's going to give him a chance to possibly get out of here with a birdie three. And you've got to like where you landed yeah. overall, right? Yeah, I was super satisfied and happy with where I was. And that shot I was happy with, too. I knew I just gave myself a chance to finish strong here. Evan's looking up at some some gap. Yeah, and when you hear me talk about a hero shot, this is kind of one of those scenarios where he had that little gap, tried to punch it through. He got all the way through. And he'll have kind of an obstructed look to possibly save the par. But when people, you know, say define what a hero shot is, that's when you're in trouble like that and you're just looking for that tiny little lane or opportunity to pull off something miraculous. And I won't say he perfectly executed, but he definitely was going after that shot because the alternative would have been to pitch out into the fairway and for sure take the bogey, which if he makes that looks like is what he'll finish with anyway. But... At least gave himself a, a chance. Grady to finish with a birdie. He leaves it left. Yeah, that's been the, the mistake we've seen from him. Anytime he's missed a putt, it was definitely on that left side. Evan with a solid putt there. A little bit of a slow or a rough day for him. He's going to finish at five under. And that one stays in for you. So uh, I need you guys to like, share, subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100,000, just a few short of that. I've got jerky. I'll bribe you. You know how I roll. Put something in the comments so that I can find a way to give away some jerky. Maybe let me know what you thought of the course. This might be the only time we see it played in this configuration as they're going to ultimately have three courses on site when it's all said and done. So, Also, let us know. Joey's first time ever on commentary. I hope yeah. you had a good time. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was very fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, everyone. That's round one here at the Huck Central. We appreciate you guys for joining We'll see you guys tomorrow.